Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sadia Zafar from HRAI, welcoming you to today's session, which is brought to you by Navian. The session will cover how to select the right model for a customer's need and how to size water heaters for residential applications. Our guest speaker, Matthew Curro, will provide details on how to install and program a water heater and how to perform maintenance when needed to ensure years of worry-free operation. A little bit of housekeeping, you will notice on the control panel of your screen, a link to ask the questions. It's the Q&A feature that you will be using. Please use that feature and ask your questions at any time during the webinar. They will be addressed to you at the end of the session. Also note, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be sent to you following the session. Now we welcome Matthew. Thank you, Sadia, and thank you, Thorada, and, and everybody at HRI for putting this together, uh, as well as thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, just looking at the uh, the list of the participants, I, I do see several familiar names here, so uh, nice to see everybody virtually again here over Zoom. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Matthew Currow. Uh, if you haven't met me before, I am the uh, Canadian Training and Product Development Manager with Navian. Uh, today, over the next uh, about hour of your time, uh, we do plan on focusing on the NPE products. Uh, and we're going to talk about the new second series of units uh, of the NPE units here. Uh, as we go over these units in detail, if anybody does have questions about other products, you're certainly welcome to ask them, but we'll probably hold off to the end uh, to answer those questions. Um, so feel free to ask questions and uh, we will get started here. So uh, starting with uh, NPE and, and Navian, if, if anybody here is not familiar with Navian and who we are as a company, uh, you'll see in our logo, it'll actually say KD Navian. Uh, KD is kind of the parent corporation to Navian. Uh, we are a company based out of Seoul, South Korea. Um, one of the things that uh, separates Navian from some of our competitors is that we manufacture and engineer almost all the parts that go into our units. Uh, so we can bring very high quality products to the market at affordable prices. Um, Navin itself came to North America in 2006. Uh, the current tankless water heater we're talking about here, NPEs, uh, these have been available since 2012. Uh, the new second series of NPEs was just released this month. Uh, so this will be uh, new to some of you here, or um, some of you might be just here to see the, the improvements and the changes we've done from first generation to second generation. Uh, we'll talk about some of those improvements uh, over the, uh, the next hour here. Uh, so the NPE unit, if you're not familiar with this, this is our condensing tankless water heater. Uh, it is available in four different sizes in both A models and S models. Uh, and we'll talk about those differences uh, as we uh, go through the training today. Uh, with Navian's generation of tankless water heaters, uh, we do feature stainless steel heat exchangers with downflow burner technology to them. Uh, and essentially, it's a design to heat exchanger that makes it so that there's very little maintenance and service required on these systems. Uh, they feature a sealed combustion chamber so that you do not need to do maintenance to the combustion side of this unit. Uh, there is still, of course, maintenance that's required, but it's mainly on the waterways, and we'll talk about that at the end of today's presentation. Uh, when we design our products, we do design them to be some of the most efficient systems on the market, uh, but we also design them to be some of the easiest units to install on the market. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we have the selling feature of two inch venting on our products. With the new second generation of our NPE units, uh, we've actually increased our venting capability of this platform by redesigning the fan as well as the dual venturi within these systems. So these new second generation units can now vent for 75 feet with two inch PVC, CPVC, polypropylene or stainless steel venting. Uh, when you see our venting distances where we list 75 feet, uh, that'd be 75 feet for the intake plus 75 feet for the exhaust that can be used. Uh, if that's not far enough to get the flue gases outside, we can actually switch to three inch venting and then vent for 150 feet for intake and 150 feet for the exhaust. Uh, if you are a longtime Navian user, uh, we appreciate your business. And, and one of the other design changes to note is our front panel has been redesigned to have a multi-line readout screen to it now. Uh, essentially, we've designed this controller to make it so that it's easier for doing the initial startup programming. Uh, it actually has a startup wizard and it'll walk you through that programming. We'll highlight some of that today. Uh, but we've also made it so that it's easier to do diagnostics information on the systems uh, because you can gather a lot more information just by glancing at this front screen instead of having to push a whole bunch of buttons in order to get feedback off that system. So with the tankless coming in four different sizes, 
Uh, we have inputs all the way up to 199,900 BTU on this platform, uh, as well as our smallest unit will fire as low as 120,000 BTUs. So note when you're sizing the gas lines, it is important that you make sure that you look at the specifications to the product and you make sure that the gas lines are capable of providing this amount of gas to the units. Uh, but please note, we don't really use this number for actually sizing units to meet customers' needs. So when it does come down to model selection and sizing unit for residential applications, uh, one of the first things that you're going to do for your customers is try and figure out what the cold groundwater temperature coming is into the systems. Uh, this will vary slightly across Canada, uh, but also depends whether we're connected to a municipality or if a customer has a well or if they're pulling the water in from a lake, uh, what that cold groundwater temperature might be. Right. Uh, what we usually do is we consider your groundwater temperature across Canada on average to be about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, once we know what that temperature is, the next step in size in a tankless water heater would be to figure out what the set point temperature is of a unit. Uh, generally for residential applications, we are going to use a set temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that could vary. But based on that, the reason why you're trying to calculate this is so that we can figure out what the temperature rise is of a system, right? So once we know what that temperature rise is, which standard residential, we're gonna say 80 degree Fahrenheit, we can then actually look at charts such as the one on the screen that you're seeing now to show how much flow rate we will get at what Delta T coming through a product. So uh, that 80 degree Delta T chart going right across there, those are going to be the name, main numbers that you're going to be looking at if you're ever sizing units to meet residential needs. Okay. Once we know this, the next step would be to figure out how many fixtures are in a customer's house and how many fixtures are they likely to run at the same time. Right. So if we're dealing with a house and, and customers saying that, hey, I have a 6,000 square foot house, what size water heater do I need? Note that it's not based on square footage of the house. That's, that's one of the most common questions we get on our uh, tech support for sizing is square footage and what do we need, right? What we'll have to know is how many showers are in that house as well as how many people maybe live in that house so that we'll know how many of those showers might need to run at the same time, okay? When we're looking at the flow rate of a shower head, you're generally gonna have a flow rate of 1.8 to 2.5 gallons per minute for worst case scenario. And then when we're looking at faucets, we're generally looking at about 0.5 all the way up to potentially 2.2 gallons per minute for a faucet uh, if it's an older style kitchen faucet, okay? So when we're sizing the systems, we do wanna calculate again, roughly what that flow rate might need to be. And then we'll look at these charts to see again, which unit's gonna match that customer's load, right? So for an example, if we're dealing with a house, customer has one bathroom and one kitchen sink, and maybe there's three or four people live in that house, we're gonna make, wanna, wanna make sure that both the shower plus the kitchen sink can be used at the same time, right? So we're gonna take that worst case scenario, uh, that two and a half gallons per minute um, out of whatever the faucet flow rate might be, and you're gonna end up probably around 3.5 gallons per minute, right? So based on that, you'll see that the NPE 180A2s and S2s could deliver 3.7 gallons per minute at that delta D. Okay. So dealing with a house with one bathroom plus a kitchen you're using at the same time, we're generally going to use this product. Okay. You'll notice I skipped right over the sizing of the 150S2. And the reason for that is that unit can deliver three gallons per minute of hot water. Right. So this is enough for some houses, but it's not enough for most houses out there. So where you would more likely use a 150 is if you're dealing with a house where or a condo where it's a, a bachelor studio, something like that, where there's only a likelihood of running a shower or a faucet at the time, that's when that 150 will get used, okay? That's a unit we actually designed for Southern states where groundwater temperatures may be 70 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So at a 50 degree Delta T, that'll do a full house versus up in Canada, it's not really doing a full house, okay? Our next size unit is our 210. Uh, comes in an A2 and an S2, and that'll deliver 4.4 gallons per minute. Right? So with that said, if we had a house that had two showers at the same time, both showers rate at two gallons per minute, we can actually do two shower heads at the same time with this product. Okay? If we're trying to do two shower heads 
plus a faucet. Then we're going to upsize and use the 240. That'll do 4.9 gallons per minute. Okay. One thing to note with this is if you do need more hot water than any one of these units can provide, we can actually cascade multiple units together. Uh, and this can be used for residential or for commercial needs. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I, I mentioned a 6,000 square foot house is when we know a house is 6,000 square feet, we know that they might have a custom rain shower head in that house, right? So if they do have a body spray systems or rain shower head, when it does come to the sizing, you're going to try and figure out that maximum amount of flow that that system will see or what that body spray system might be rated for. So if a customer tells you that, you know, I want to put a body spray system in that's say 20 gallons per minute, we're going to end up needing to put four NPE 240 units into that project, right? Great sound feature about using tankless for projects that needs large amounts of flow or just switching a customer over from a tank to a tankless is that the customer will have an endless supply of hot water, right? So when we look at tankless units, sometimes they are kind of missold over the years where sometimes people will say, you know, install this and it's going to save you a ton of money. Residentially, we don't suggest using that as much of a selling feature uh, because they will save a little bit of money every year, uh, but it's, it's not a huge number, right? Where their savings residentially is if they had large demands for hot water, then they'll truly see returns on uh, on, on what that savings is per month on systems. Uh, the main benefit though to tankless for residential applications is comfort. So it's again, to give that endless supply of hot water. Uh, and the other big selling feature to using tankless for residential applications is the tankless is warranted for quite a bit longer than a tank. Uh, of course, it will vary slightly depending on which manufacturer we're comparing to, uh, but in general, the warranty for residential is almost twice as long with a tankless versus a tank style system. Okay. Uh, if anybody here sizes units for commercial applications, uh, stay tuned. Um, we will be holding a, uh, an additional training later this week about commercial sizing applications. Okay. Uh, when it does come down to looking at the specification units, common question we get is, is what gas pressure do you need? Uh, our units are actually field gas convertible. So we need to purchase any one of these NPE units. Uh, they do come set up as natural gas uh, and our natural gas will ultimately say follow local code. Uh, this will vary in different parts of Canada, uh, but we do have capability of natural gas to run anywhere from three and a half to 10 and a half inches water column. Uh, looking at the names here, I know a lot of people are joining us from Ontario. Uh, Ontario, generally you're gonna be between six and eight inches water column on your gas uh, for natural gas. Uh, on the propane side, we can work anywhere from eight to 13 inches water column. Generally, that's gonna be around 11 inches when you go to do an install, okay? Uh, as far as venting is concerned, we did talk about the, the distances there briefly, where I mentioned two inch for 60 feet or three inch for 150 feet. Um, with that, uh, note that if you're ever running with three inch venting, you do not need to change the vent collar on our units. Uh, all you'll have to do is put six inches of two inch pipe into that collar increase to three inch, uh, and then you could run your three inch for as far as you need to there. Okay. Uh, when it does come down to the size of the units, that is another big selling feature of the tankless units uh, versus a tank. Uh, they do take up quite a bit less space in a mechanical room, uh, but they're also up on the wall, not taking up that valuable floor space. So it allows for a lot more, more storage in a mechanical room if the customer needs to. Uh, of course, make sure we are following local codes in regards to clearances to combustibles and so on though. Uh, when it does come to doing your install and you're wondering on water pipe connections, uh, note that everything on the water side is three quarter inch. So on the bottom right side of the unit, we have a three quarter inch inlet connection there. And there is actually a water filter here. Uh, and that water filter is there to try and prevent large contaminants from being pulled into that heat exchanger. So if there's you know, burrs left over in the piping as you're doing install, anything like that, that'll help prevent all that from actually getting into the primary secondary heat exchanger. Uh, on the far left side of the unit, there is a three quarter inch hot water outlet connection as well. Uh, and then if you are installing our A model and not the S model or standard model, there is actually a three quarter inch connection kind of in the middle left side of the unit there for a dedicated recirculation line. So a great feature to this is if you are ever installing a unit in a house that has a dedicated recirculation line, you can connect the line right to the bottom of the unit and make use of our internal circulator uh, to do the entire research for that entire house or commercial building. Right? Uh, so that 
circulator with under unit. It's a, uh, a Navian circulator. Uh, and with that, it can handle a 100 foot half inch recirc line for about 400 feet of a three quarter inch recirc line. Okay. Uh, the other important connection to note uh, is the gas connection. Uh, this is also three quarter inch. Uh, we do recommend uh, having three quarter inch uh, two our units. Uh, sometimes you might have to have a larger pipe uh, depending on the gas line. Uh, so next up is just a comparison to show you the difference between A's and S's. So I've mentioned we have A's and S's a couple times so far, but I haven't actually told you the difference between them. So an S model is pictured on the left side of the screen. Uh, and the S model is something called a standard unit. Okay, so when it does come to, to unit selection, uh, one of the first things that you do is figure out what size unit you need, and then whether we need an A or an S model. Okay, the reason why we call this an S model is this unit will fire to deliver hot water like other tankless water heaters on the market, okay? Uh, the standard way that tankless water heaters fire is that the burner within the units, in our case, right at the top of the system here, does not come on unless there's flow going through the systems. So a lot of people refer to these uh, products and tankless water heaters as instant water heaters. Uh, we don't really like calling them instant water heaters because they're, they're better referred to as an on-demand system, uh, especially when we're looking at this S model because it's not producing hot water until there's a demand of at least 0.5 gallons per minute being sensed by the flow sensor at the bottom of our unit here, right? Once we see 0.5 gallons per minute going through that system, that burner is going to come on, it's going to start heating up that water and then continuously provide an endless supply of hot water for that customer. Uh, it's important to note that when we think of that endless supply of hot water, that supply of water is limited to what the unit can produce. Uh, so if a unit is ever undersized, there is actually a motorized water adjustment valve within this product that will limit the flow going through the unit, right? And that applies to both S's and A models. So if someone tries to put say eight gallons per minute through the unit, this motorized valve will prevent that from happening, okay? So just note S models on demand systems. Okay, the A model on the right side of the screen is quite a bit different with how it'll fire up. So with this, the A model actually has a built-in circulator behind the front panel here, as well as a buffer tank right here that holds 1.3 liters of water. And this unit can actually be set up to maintain temperature within it. So this way, when there's that demand for hot water and a customer is opening up a fixture, instead of waiting for that burner to come on and start providing that hot water, the hot water is already there. So instantly, this unit can have hot water leaving the outlet side, being provided to the system, and just heat that cold water as it comes in. Right? So if you're ever doing a residential application, switching a customer over from a tank to a tankless, note that if you put an S model or other brands units in, typically it's gonna take an extra 30 to 45 seconds for that customer to get hot water, versus if we put the A models in, they're not waiting. Right? So same wait time is going from tank to tankless. Right. And there's a lot of programming features right on here uh, for setting that up to meet the customer's needs. Okay. So built-in circulator, uh, built-in buffer tank uh, right within our systems there. Right. The other feature to this buffer tank being on the outlet side of the systems is it'll make it so if somebody starts the flow and then stops the flow, this will absorb temperature fluctuations or cold water sandwiches from being felt. Uh, so it allows us to deliver extremely steady hot water temperatures to systems, even if the flow changes going through the platform. Okay. Uh, we also back this up by having one of the best warranties in the industry. Uh, when used for commercial applications, uh, our warranty would be eight years for the heat exchangers, five years for all parts, and one year for labor on the systems. Uh, if we actually are doing a residential application, uh, we do have a warranty that gets increased to 15 years. Uh, for the heat exchangers, five years for all parts in one year for labor within the systems. And we keep that full warranty, even if there's recirculation, but as long as the recirculation is controlled, right? So what we mean by that is if we're using our internal controller for running that circulator, or if you have an external pump and there's an aquastat and or a timer on that line, that'll maintain full warranty. And if we do uncontrolled recirc, which would mean we have an external pump coming on and pushing through that unit 24 seven, never shuts down. Then we do lower that warranty slightly. Uh, quite a few accessories that are available. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about them all in detail today just because there's, there's not enough time to do that. 
Uh, but if anybody has questions about some of the accessories that I don't cover today, feel free to reach out afterwards and we will uh, discuss them in detail. Uh, one accessory I will mention though is air propane conversion kit. Uh, and that is actually an accessory that is included with all the units, right? So again, as I mentioned, all units come set up as natural gas, but they actually come with a conversion kit taped inside the bag on the left side of the system. Uh, and that allows us to convert the unit from natural gas to propane in about 10 minutes in the field. Okay. Uh, as far as water quality goes, please note uh, with tankless water heaters, we do want to make sure that the water coming to the units is potable as well as it's not too hard. Uh, if we are ever above 12 grains water harness, uh, that is when we're going to want to add items such as a water softener or some sort of water treatment on there uh, to protect the heat exchanger. Okay, if you're above 12 grains, uh, that's going to increase the amount of maintenance and service required on the systems. Okay. Uh, one of the key accessories to note uh, is plumbing service kits. So there are multiple service kits out there available. Uh, we do sell one that's, that's manufactured by Watts. Um, with that, we sell one specifically for our A models and a different one that can be used on A's or S's. Uh, so we do have a three valve kit available. Uh, and what that essentially is, is a way of isolating and servicing the hot and cold side, as well as the recirculation line, if you are using one. Okay, so if you're not using the recirculation line or if you're using an S model, uh, you might as well save a little bit of money on your service kits uh, and you can make use of a two valve kit. Okay, you don't have to specifically use Navian ones if you're used to other brands uh, that do work as well. Uh, another accessory here that I am gonna mention is something called a Navi Cirque, okay? Uh, this is a great accessory. We have lots of great feedback from customers in the field about this. Um, what this accessory allows us to do is make it so that if it's taking too long to get the hot water to a particular fixture, uh, maybe the customer is saying it's taking, you know, two minutes to get hot water to the, the third story bathroom or, or second story um, master bathroom, whatever it is. Um, what we can do is if there's not a dedicated recirculation line in that house or building, uh, is we can actually install this underneath the fixture closest to where there's that concern, right? So we'll put it underneath the kitchen sink typically, uh, and it basically tees the hot and cold lines together so that we can make use of the existing cold water line in that house to do the recirculation for that house, okay? Nice thing about this is when you go to plumb it in, you're, you're plumbing this in at the fixture, but you're not actually doing changes externally to the plumbing within the systems. Right? So we actually have a internal bypass built in that allows our circulator to either pull in from the buffer tank, from a dedicated recirculation line if we are using them, or it can actually pull in from the cold line as well within the units. Right? It's a great little feature there for that faster hot water delivery. Um, just to give you a quick overview of how to do the gas conversion, I'm going to show you one slide on this. Uh, please note for additional details on this, please refer to the instructions in our install manual uh, or the instructions that come with a kit. Uh, we do also have a video showing how this is done uh, that you can access through our website if needed. Uh, but if we are doing gas conversion, just give you a quick rundown here again. Uh, first step is to locate the gas conversion kit. So you're going to take the front cover off the unit and then inside the cabinet taped on the left side is a bag with the conversion kit as well as instructions, right? So what you're then going to do is remove the gas pipe that connects the gas valve to the dual venturi. So there are six screws that you pull out. Then at the top is where we're going to remove an O-ring, the orifice plate, a packing, and then we're going to reassemble that with the proper gas conversion kit, okay? Once we have that reassembled, we are going to flip a dip switch on our system so that the unit knows it's set to propane. And then we're gonna do calibration to the gas valve. Um, and again, follow the manual, follow that guide for details on how to do that calibration. Right? If you're used to using Navian products, one thing I'm gonna point out is this location of this dip switch has changed. Uh, it is on the left side of the unit right here. It is no longer on the front of uh, top of the controller. Okay. Uh, as far as venting goes for our products, um, we do approve both direct vent and non-direct vent installs. Uh, please note though that you do need to make sure you are following your local code requirements. Uh, most areas in Canada will not allow non-direct venting of the tankless uh, due to the capacity of the units. Right. So this isn't just restricted to Navian products, uh, but most inspectors do want direct vent. 
Um, so direct venting is best. Direct venting will make sure we have enough air for the combustion unit, that it's clean air coming into the systems, uh, and that we are meeting codes and avoiding backdraft in the house. Okay. If you are in an area where your inspectors will allow non-direct vent, um, you certainly can do so. We are approved for it. Um, the reason why a lot of inspectors don't allow this with tankless water heaters is you need about 10,000 cubic feet of free airspace for combustion when we're doing non-direct venting. Uh, so you have to have your makeup air grills and the mechanical room door and make sure the space that it's connected to has that uh, uh, makeup capability plus some other requirements. Okay. Uh, so venting distances, uh, we did talk about total distance. I didn't talk about elbows yet though. So again, two inch venting for 75 feet for intake and 75 feet the exhaust. Important thing to mention though, is you can also have six elbows on an intake and six elbows on that exhaust. Um, with that, if that's not long enough, again, we go three inch. Uh, and on the three inch side, you can actually have eight elbows in intake and eight elbows on that exhaust. Uh, when you do look at those elbows though, please note that when we listed 75 and 150 feet, we did not deduct any elbows, right? So for each elbow you're adding, if it's a two inch elbow, you have to deduct for eight linear feet. Or if it's a three inch elbow, we do have to deduct for five linear feet. Okay. Uh, one nice design change that we've done to the systems uh, is we do want to make sure, of course, that our units are always some of the safest units out there being installed. Uh, so we actually added a vent installation detector to our exhaust collar, or we call it a VID for short. And essentially, that's it is a switch that has been added to the exhaust collar, and it makes it so that the unit will not be able to fire unless we have three inches of venting inserted all the way into that collar within our systems. Right. So please make sure when you are cutting your vent pipe, um, cut it properly in accordance with code, properly chamfer it, put it in there, and then tighten the clamp right here to complete the connection. So you do not need to use glue or cement to connect your venting materials to the collar. Uh, it is a clamp type connection here. Okay. Uh, as far as vent terminations go, uh, please note we do require a minimum clearance of one foot horizontal and vertical on the terminations. And another nice feature we can do with our tankless water heaters is common vent them, right? So if we're doing a commercial project or even a residential project that's needing multiple units installed in them, we want to make sure, of course, that the venting doesn't look like an eyesore when it's outside, but also we want to come up with a way so that there is cost savings to doing that install for you, as well as labor savings when you're doing um, multiple unit installs. So common venting is something that we can do uh, with our larger size units or 240s. And you can convent up to 12 units together, right? So if we had uh, that house, for example, that had as a body spray, they need four tankless water heaters in it. What you're gonna do when you're figuring out your convent sizing, is so you're gonna look at this chart, you're gonna go locate your four and then follow that line across. And you'll see that when you have four units, if you wanna common vent that with three inch venting, you can vent for 30 feet with three inch, 53 feet for four inch or 120 feet with six inch. When you see that distance, that is the same distance for the intake uh, as the exhaust. So you can have 120 intake, 120 feet exhaust using six inch, for example. Okay. Uh, we don't include this two inch section though. So between the units and the trunk, uh, that's not included in that distance. That is an additional 16 feet of equivalent length of two inch that can be used on that connection. Okay. Uh, if we are common venting, please note though that there is an accessory that's required. It's called our common vent collar. Uh, it's essentially a collar that has an additional damper in it. Uh, so if you are installing a convent system, you remove the factory installed damper, uh, sorry, factory installed collar. You screw this into the systems. There's a jumper for that VID switch. Uh, and then right from there, we can run the venting. Okay. We do also have a communication cable that comes with that uh, collar. So when you're setting that system up, what do you do is you actually program one unit to be a main unit, the other unit to be subunits. Uh, and then through that cable, they'll actually do a lead lag process uh, as well as average out the runtime on the systems. Okay, it's a great selling feature there. Uh, again, stay tuned next, uh, next couple of weeks there. We're going to have a, a commercial training that's going to cover that in a little, little bit more detail. And another thing to note with your installs is what to do with the condensation. Right? Uh, note that condensation is acidic. So it's about 4 pH. So it will eat away at metal materials. Uh, so make sure when you are running your condensate drains, uh, go to a drain that can handle the acidic condensation. If there's no drain there. Uh, go to a condensate pump and then a drain or uh, uh, go through a neutralizer and then a drain within the systems.
Okay, so it's a half inch NPT connection on the bottom. Okay. Another nice feature to the Navian product series uh, is all of our products. Uh, they do come actually set up with a power cord on them. It's a three, three prong plug. Um, we do not require a dedicated circuit to the systems, but it is helpful to make sure that you do have one just to make sure that the unit's protected and we have proper power coming to the systems. Okay. If you are in an area where inspectors are requiring GFCIs or AFCIs, uh, we don't suggest using them on our units just because they do cause some nuisance tripping. Uh, so the way around that is to actually hardwire our units uh, if that is being required. Uh, some of you probably saw that the picture of the unit earlier and was wondering what that wiring or what that control terminal block was on the uh, the right side of this controller. Uh, and this is what we actually call a hot button control. So built into all the NPE products is a hot button control. Uh, and what this is, is essentially a way of making it so that instead of running the recirculation constantly or having it set up with a timer to it uh, or other programming means, is you can actually wire up buttons within a house or a building back to this controller so that at the push of the button, the recirculation is coming on for a set time period, right? It's a programmable time amount of time. Uh, default is uh, uh, 20 minutes on air. Uh, we do have dip switches for quickly changing that uh, that are located right at the bottom of this uh, um, controller right here, okay? Um, with that, there is also the option of connecting wireless push button or motion sensors, okay? So there are actually accessories that can be purchased or you can basically install a, a wireless motion sensor in the bathroom so that when the customer walks in the bathroom, that automatically triggers the recirculation to come on just for that, again, program amount of time. So great little feature there built into all the units, okay? Uh, another feature built into units and one of the things that I always suggest be changed after an installation is completed is a temperature lock dip switch, okay? So our NPE series platform, because it's designed for both commercial and residential applications, right out of the box, all of the NPEs can be set anywhere from 97 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? With that, uh, we do wanna make sure that the customers are not setting the units hotter than they need to. Uh, so what I would suggest is once you finish doing the programming of our units, if you are an installer joining us, uh, is flip dip switch two to be locked, right? And this will make it so that somebody can no longer adjust the temperature just by tapping the plus or minus button. Uh, if they do, it'll actually say temperature lock enabled on the front cover. All right, so great dip switch there. So this is our, our multi-line readout screen, uh, very user-friendly. Um, with this screen, as you can see, just by glancing at that, you can get an idea of what might be happening within our systems. Um, one of the things to note with this screen is there are two different menus that you can get into. Okay? So there's a main menu, which is accessed by pushing the M button once, or there's our service installer menu, which is accessed by pushing the M and the back button for five seconds. Right. So that's how you would get into things such as cascading the systems, uh, setting it for common venting, uh, or doing test modes on the systems. So a nice feature there is with our test mode is if you suspect that any parts might not be working properly, you can actually individually test them to see what might be an issue within the systems. Uh, we do also have a screen here for status information. So you can actually see the feedback from all the different major components, including voltages from a few parts to assist with troubleshooting just off this front panel. Okay. Uh, a couple of key icons on there. I think most of them are, are pretty universal. You'll understand what uh, you're looking at on that front controller, but you'll see there, it'll show you what our flow rate is, what the current set point temperature is, whether a unit is a main unit or a subunit, if it's on propane or natural gas, as well as what recirculation mode it's set for. Uh, one of the biggest features to this front controller and this, this newly released front controller is this startup wizard though. So when you initially plug this unit in, front screen will glow and it'll say Navian. Uh, it has a really nice look to it. Uh, but once that's done, it'll say activating startup wizard, right? So instead of having you pull it a manual and going through all the programming that way, or trying to memorize what all the programming is, this will say step one, setting the time and date. Right? And then it's gonna give you the option. It'll say, set the time. And you'll see right on there, we have year, month, uh, day, uh, and then we have hour, minute, seconds, right? I do highly suggest setting that up properly, uh, especially if we're activating recirculation in certain time modes, 
Um, further in advanced settings, you can actually program when this unit is going to produce an error code, right? So we do have actually settings where if the date and time is set up properly, you can have this set up so that after six months, 12 months, 24 months, uh, and actually adjust them in 10 day increments to exactly what day you want that homeowner or end user uh, to see an error code indicating the unit needs to service, okay? The next step would be our metric or imperial setting. And then following that, we have a gas type setting, right? And you'll notice the word in this though is check the gas type and I'll say natural gas or propane, okay? This is just confirmation that the dip switch on the side of the panel has been set up properly, right? So if you set it to say propane, but the dip switch on the side of the front panel is still in natural gas mode, it won't let you go through the program anymore. It'll tell you that there's an error, check dip switches, okay? Following that, we have an installation elevation settings. Uh, so out of the box, the units are designed to work up to 2,000 feet. Uh, if you are joining us from Alberta, for example, if you are in Calgary specifically, Calgary is at about 2,200 feet, right? So in order to work in places such as Alberta and, and Calgary specifically, you select the elevation to be 2,000 to 4,000 feet. So all the NPEs can work anywhere from zero to 10,100 feet. Uh, we just have to set that up accordingly. Uh, after that, we're going to program the recirculation and what mode we want to program the recirculation, okay? If we are on an S2 units, note that they do not have a built-in pump, uh, but they do have the ability of powering control and external pump off a control board, right? So we do have an accessory for that. Other than that, for programming, we're going to choose whether we're doing internal, external, whether it's always going to be on, whether it's going to learn the customer's usage pattern and do what we refer to as intelligent preheating, whether we're going to set a schedule and we're setting the schedule, we can do a seven day schedule. We can do a five plus two schedule um, or a five plus one plus one. Okay. So some great recirculation programming features there. Okay. Uh, next up is a, a quick slide here on our H2 air kits. So one of the very common ways that new houses are being built now, especially condos, townhouses, uh, is to actually take a tankless water heater combine it with an air handler so that that tankless water heater is doing the full heating and hot water for that house. Okay, if you are ever doing that, please use our accessory referred to as an H2 air kit. Um, what this allows us to do with this kit is that kit basically comes with all the parts you're gonna see at the bottom right side of the screen. So there's a control board add-on to the unit that'll snap right on the control board within our unit, allows you to run the room thermostat to that control board, the included outdoor sensor should get installed outdoors and back to the controller. Included flow switch should get installed and, and wired back to this controller and then wires between this and the air handler. So this will make it so that on a call for heat, our internal circulator is gonna come on and actually be the space heating pump to deliver heat through the air handler. So we basically just added an end switch to the unit that changes how our pump works, right? So the pump's no longer being used for recirculation is now being used for space heating. Right. Great feature about th using this kit is not only do we have an end switch now to our tankless water heaters, but we also are using an outdoor sensor so we can run extremely efficiently. Okay. We have gone through testing and we've tested this with a number of different air handlers uh, to show you what those efficiency ratings are. Uh, so if anybody here is familiar with P9.11 or if you, that ever comes up, uh, let us know and we can tell you what air handler tests at what P9 rating. Uh, another thing to point out though is this flow switch. Um, some of you I'm sure are familiar with those flow switches already. Um, this flow switch doesn't necessarily work the way everybody thinks it works, right? So it can work in domestic priority mode, which is default in, in the way typically somebody thinks it works or everybody thinks it works. Uh, and essentially the way that works is, is as soon as that flow switch closes, that is what is going to tell the unit to shut down the air handler and switch to domestic priority, right? So where this is different, is we do actually have the option where right off the front little controller, there's some dip switches there, we can activate something called simultaneous mode. So what the simultaneous mode will do is make it so when it sees that the flow switch closes, it actually allows the air handler to run at the same time as the heating, sorry, as the domestic hot water. Uh, and it waits till the burner's at 80% capacity, and then it'll switch to domestic priority. So nice thing about that is if somebody's trying to heat their house, plus say do dishes at the same time or, or jump in the shower at the same time, 
They can actually do so if they set that in simultaneous mode instead of just being in one mode or the other. Okay. Um, so that's it for the accessories. Again, there are several more accessories that we have available. Uh, I'm not going to cover them today just to, to save time, but if anybody has questions about uh, other items, let us know when we can cover them. A uh, little slide here to show you about our, our, our rewards program. Uh, so if anybody's new to Navian, note that Navian does have a rewards program. Um, it is a great rewards program. It's our way of giving you something back for choosing Navian as your tankless water heater brand of choice or boiler manufacturer of choice. Uh, we have boilers all up to 400,000 BTUs now. So a lot of different units for different applications. Uh, but the way this works is essentially after you complete an install, you can go to navianrewards.com, uh, type in the serial number, um, upload a copy of the invoice, and right away you're going to get points for that unit you installed. Once you have points, you can redeem this for uh, a variety of different items. You can get swag if you want, um, you know, chargers, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, all that stuff, Vita Pro tool bags, or most commonly we, we do see people use uh, uh, redeem it for Visa cards. Another thing you can do with your points though is use it as marketing dollars for your company, right? Whether you want to do a radio ad, a magazine ad, whether you want to do truck wraps, um, we can use those dollars for that, okay? And another great feature with that is once our training facility is open once again, uh, you will be able to redeem points for training. Uh, you know, a couple of people here have already gone through our training and I think you've, you've enjoyed them over the years. A nice feature to our trainings, if anybody's new to our trainings, is if you attend Academy training, you can actually get parts kits for our products. So now when you're working on a system in the field, uh, you'll have that box with you on your truck or in your shop. So you can get that unit up and running right away uh, in the event that you need a part. Okay. Uh, as far as tech support goes within Navian, uh, we do have some of the best technical support in the industry. Uh, I think many of you have found that over the years that, you know, that those techs are there to help you out seven days a week, uh, 363 days a year. Uh, with Navian technical support, if you do ever need assistance, please call our 1-800 number for that. Uh, Monday to Friday, uh, Eastern time, tech support is open from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, it is open from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Uh, there are times of the year where that uh, phone system can kind of get backed up and, and a little bit overwhelmed with calls, uh, but we do typically maintain a wait time of about one minute on that support team, right? So typically very fast to get that service. Uh, and tech support is out of the state, so there's two offices. Uh, one of them is in Moorestown, New Jersey, and the other one is in Irvine, California. Okay. Another thing to point out is we do have an office in Vaughan. Uh, so we do have a, a, a training facility, part shipping warehouse in Vaughan, uh, located right at the corner of Steeles and Weston Road. Uh, so great facility there that uh, um, right now it's not open for training purposes, but uh, hopefully uh, we can get past COVID someday uh, and then open up for it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor to questions now. Uh, so again, appreciate uh, everybody's time, um, your, your lunch hour, late morning hour with us, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, I know there are a couple questions that are already in there, but if anybody does have additional questions, uh, please use the Q&A feature and we will address any additional questions. Okay. Uh, hi, Matthew. I have uh, a couple of questions already and I'll rifle through them. Uh, we have uh, something from uh, John Harris. Um, John, if you'd like to actually um, uh, talk, you, I can certainly open the mic for you, but I'll, I'll just add your, um, I'll uh, mention what your question is. He's asking, um, any comments or advice about pairing your unit with a DWHR drain water heat recovery? Uh, John, you can absolutely do that. Um, the one thing to be careful with you're doing that is when it does come down to unit selection, um, be careful that you do not adjust your delta T too much. So one of the things that we see is sometimes people put a drain uh, heat recovery system in and they'll think instead of needing to size now at a um, you know an 80 or 70 degree delta T, all of a sudden they'll try and be sizing at like a 40 degree delta T uh, and doesn't quite work that way. Um, they do work well at preheating that incoming groundwater temperature to um, be slightly warmer. So lower delta T, higher efficiency from the systems uh, and slightly higher flow rates as well with that. Uh, so you certainly can do them. And, and I think uh, what I've seen internally is, is they have come a long way over the years. Uh, the newer ones have a uh, much higher efficiency and, and less uh, pressure drop than some of the older ones. So they do work. So okay, great. Uh, I have another one here. Uh, 
don't know who it's from, but uh, he's saying uh, that they are uh, fairly new uh, to on-demand hot, hot water systems. Depending on the municipality, I've seen thermostatic mixing valves required to meet the OBC for your traditional hot water tanks. Uh, do on-demand systems require a mixing valve? Uh, thank you. Perfect. Great question. Um, so it's from an anonymous. Um, so it's going to depend on the inspector. Um, the way the OBC code is, is, is technically written is that you cannot deliver temperature above 120 degrees Fahrenheit to a fixture. Uh, it is actually uh, written in um, Celsius though. So I forget that exact conversion number. Uh, but as long as you're not having a temperature above 120 being set on the systems, you should not need that mixing valve. Uh, so for applications where you're doing an air handler, as well as domestic, absolutely, you would need the mixing valve. Uh, but most applications with tankless only, you will not, uh, provided that you put that dip switch on the side of the panel in temperature lock mode. So if you don't put that in temperature lock mode and you can easily adjust the temperature on the front panel, that is when the inspector will say you need to install a mixing valve. So that, that dip switch will save you from having to put that in. Uh, that's great. So I have another one here from uh, Martin Donnelly. Uh, can you use the unit with a storage tank for in-floor heating? Uh, Martin, I would suggest against doing that. Um, it, there is a new requirement from the newest uh, uh, CSA 214 hydronic code um, that that is really saying that you can only use them uh, when you use for a combi, you can only use it for doing heat through an air handler. If you're doing in-floor heating, I would suggest for applications like that to always use a combi type system. Um, reason for that is the combi has a plated heat exchanger in it. So you can make sure that the domestic hot water is always gonna stay safe and potable. Uh, we're not gonna potentially contaminate that with the water in the in-floor heating. Uh, so one of the requirements in the new 214 code is that when you are doing uh, combination open loop systems, you have to make sure that the water is fully circulating every 24 hours. Uh, and there's a minimum amount of time that's required based on the amount of water that's actually within the system. Okay. Uh, I also have something from Freddie uh, Relon. Uh, number of elbow max is six. Is one to 45 count as one elbow? Sorry, does one to 45 count as one elbow? Perfect. Great question, Freddie. Hi, Freddie. Um, so a 45 does not count as a 90. So if you're putting a two inch 45 in specifically, uh, you'd have to duck for four feet, not eight feet. Okay. So you can have two 45s be the same as 190. So. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, we have uh, Rose Anderson who has a question. Can you confirm the high temperature water uh, run through the Navy and tankless water heaters such as um, uh, desuperheating hot water okay. from geothermal systems. Sorry, <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I'm reading it correctly. <laughs> nope, you are. Okay. Um, so Rose, um, with something like that, uh, the problem with having a high cold water inlet temperature is uh, it's a water heater, not a hot water heater. So depending on what flow rates you're looking for, there could be issues with it. Um, we don't list a maximum cold water inlet or maximum return water temperature. Uh, because often with us being set to 185 degrees for applications such as sterilization, we might be doing a recirc line that has, you know, 180 degree water coming back to the systems. So with that, we do want to just make sure that you have enough delta T that the unit will continue to fire. So if you had, for an example, a um, return water temperature coming of 130 and you have a set temperature of 140, the unit will fire, but it's not enough delta T to fire properly. So we do want that return water temperature to ideally be cool enough to allow condensation to occur uh, and fire up properly. Uh, also note when you are doing that kind of D superheater application is what the flow rate is you're trying to go through each tankless, if it is a, a commercial application you're looking at, uh, and make sure that that flow rate does not exceed four gallons per minute uh, on a continual basis through there, uh, even less if you are going into really high temperatures. Okay. Uh, I have another one here from uh, Matus uh, Kalaha. If you don't know the amount of occupants or the usage of this uh, fixture, is there any reason why we just can't go with the largest model size, which has the light, highest uh, flow rate? 
Yeah, great question. Um, you can definitely go with a larger size. The thing is, if we don't know the fixtures, we just can't guarantee that it's going to be large enough. Um, so one of the things you might want to look at as well, if you don't know the fixtures, is the size of water line within the house. Um, so, you know, if, if it is a house that has, you know, inch and a quarter coming in or inch and a half, it's rare, but it does happen. Uh, you might have to look at that and say, all right, I'm going to put two units in or three units in based on that. Um, you know, looking at what the house might end up needing. If we don't know what the fixtures are, but we know it's a, you know, 1200 square foot bungalow with a uh, three quarter water line coming in, you know, we can be pretty certain that when we put a 240 in, that will be large enough to meet the, uh, the needs of that house because of that limited supply available. Um, I have a question here is how can I uh, receive warranty parts if needed? Yeah, perfect. So best way to get warranty um, support on any part or heat exchange or whatever you're looking for uh, would be to contact Navian Technical Support uh, at our 1-800 number. So 1-800-519-8794. Uh, and then what will happen is our techs will do diagnostics with you over the phone. If you need a warranty replacement part, uh, we will ship the parts out typically so you're going to receive it the next day or the day after. Uh, if you are local in the Vaughan, Toronto area, you can also speak with TechSport and, and pick them up from us uh, or a lot of distributor stock parts and you can pick them up directly from them as well. Okay. Uh, does Navian have a list of preferred installers and how can I become one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so once our training facility is up and open again, then we can get more people listed on that. Um, but with that, there's a, a section on our website where you can actually, uh, it says installer dealer locator. Uh, you can actually type in your postal code and see who's trained for install or service um, in your area. So hopefully we can, again, get people in that facility again soon, but uh, no dates, unfortunately, due to COVID when that's going to happen. Okay. Um, I don't have any uh, other questions. Um, however, um, are there a few final words that you want to uh, say, Matthew? Um, well, just appreciate everybody's time and, and thank you uh, for putting this together as well. Uh, oh. if, if anybody does have any questions that you want to ask in private, uh, please feel to, free to write down my email or my phone number and we can uh, discuss whatever your, your concern might be um, later on. Actually, I've got one more. <laughs> I'm going to, oh, two more now. <laughs> uh, just one second. Uh, I'm, uh, this is from Rose again. I'm not sure if you, un, uh, she wasn't sure if you understood the question. Uh, can uh, we feed high temperature water through the Navian? Um, our uh, D superheater storage tank is typically 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and it's my understanding that the Navian uh, can handle this. Uh, Renai always wants us to mix the inlet temperature down. Yep. So you could have 120 coming into the systems. Sorry if I misunderstood that, but it, um, you could have 120. What I was saying is it depends on what our set outlet temperature is. So if you have it 120 coming in and then you have it set to 120, what's going to happen is the unit's just going to short cycle because it's going to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to fire up and this heat can't go anywhere, hit temperature and just shut off. So I wouldn't recommend doing something like that. Uh, if we had it set to 130 outlet with 120 coming in, it's still not enough delta T for it to properly run um, unless we have a, a large enough flow rate to absorb um, the, the minimum amount of BTUs within the units. I wouldn't suggest inlets of 120 and 130 though, because the unit's not condensing. So even though, you know, we're looking at a rating of, of 96, 95 um, UEF, it's, it's going to run, call it 70, 80% uh, with that high return water temperature systems. So you just got to make sure that your set temperature is again high enough um, to keep the burner running. Okay. I have another one from Freddie uh, uh, Rilon. Uh, thanks for your reply. The city inspector count one to 45 as one elbow. Um, Lennox specifically uh, mentions in the manual number of 90 elbows. Maybe your manual should uh, indicate maximum 90 elbows is six. Yeah, so Freddie, the manual does state that um, you can use um, up to six elbows. I, I'd say you're correct that it doesn't really say differentiate between 90 elbow and 45 elbow, but later on in the manual, it does also say that two 45s are equivalent to 190 elbow. Um, so I can help you out that if, if you want, I, I can send you that page from the manual and, and hopefully that'll help uh, you out with that inspector. 
And uh, we just have a comment from uh, Darren uh, uh, Fearnley. Uh, uh, it's not a question, but a comment. Um, he's happy with the tech support and how quick he got uh, the part delivered. Um, uh, it was one of the units with the, uh, it says Ben, Ben, uh, Venture reports. Bad Venture. Okay. So you had a dual Venturi <laughs> with a uh, Orpheus not big enough, I take it, Darren. So um, I'm glad it was a good experience. I'm glad they were able to fix that right away. That's actually one of the, uh, one of the tro troublesome things to try and troubleshoot sometimes because with the, the that Venturi issue that we were having, I'm, I'm glad we fixed it. Um, but it was one of those things where sometimes people had to go back once or twice to, to try and um, get that part. But uh, I'm glad you saw firsthand that tech support is there to uh, to work with you and, and help you out uh, when there is a concern. So so great and knowledgeable techs. Um, we have a lot of techs that have been with us for I can say 10, 12 years, as well as we have techs that are former plumbers, we have techs that are electricians, we have some engineers on our tech support. Um, so very knowledgeable uh, staff is what we try to do on that support team. So thanks for the feedback. Okay, great. Uh, so that that ends all the uh, the questions. And if anyone does have any other uh, questions, you can certainly reach out directly to Matthew. His email address is uh, and phone number is um, on the uh, slides. All of these, um, this entire presentation is recorded and will be made available to everyone in the next um, uh, couple of hours. Um, I'd also like to mention that we do have uh, another Navian Part 2 session coming up uh, April the 29th, and it's on commercial uh, tankless water heaters uh, and hybrid models as well, I believe. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, you can find that on the HREI uh, um, uh, events page. And um, I thank everyone and, and Matthew for uh, participating in this uh, session today. Perfect. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Sadia, okay. and, and everybody else for joining us today. Okay. No problem. Thanks. Have a good day.